Amigo! Hello, people. Today we're going to talk about the Harrington and Richardson Mod HK4. This is H&R's 100th year anniversary pistol that they had made in Germany by the company Heckler & Koch. The caliber is a 9mm Kurz, K-U-R-Z, which means short in German. So this is not a 9mm Luger or 9mm Para, which is the most common 9mm today. This is a 9mm Kurz, which here in America is most commonly called a 380 ACP, which is a Browning cartridge. There we see that this magazine is an H H and K magazine, manufactured May of '71, chambered for a nine millimeter Kurz. Very unique pistol. Doesn't have a slide release, and it doesn't have a magazine release in the in the conventional place. The Browning style magazine release. It has this standard European style magazine release. And there's no slide lock. And although there's no slide lock, the slide still locks to the rear when the gun has no mag or a mag in it, but either way, when the gun is empty, it locks to the rear. And the only way to get the slide to go back forward, since there's no release, is to insert the magazine. And when you lock it for lock the magazine into place, it causes the slide to go forward and load that first round into the chamber. There are some handguns on the market today that operate like this, but not many. Okay, now we're going to talk about field stripping. So, of course, the first thing we want to do is make sure the chamber's empty. And then we need the slide back forward. So, in order to do that, just release the magazine and then reinsert it. And then take it back out again. Now, the next thing we need to do is find this lever in the trigger guard. You can use a tool or your fingernail, but grab onto this little ledge on the lever and push down on it. And when you push down so far on it, watch what happens to the slide. It falls forward and is now loose on the frame. Now the only thing we need to do now is put our fingers on the front of the trigger guard, our thumb on the back of the slide, and just push forward. And the gun comes apart. Now to remove the barrel, you'll want to push through the ejection port as you pull down on the barrel. Pull down and push. Now this is a very unique style of recoil spring. Uh, that's captured in this way. I've, I've never seen a, a pistol with a spring that's captured over the chamber like this. This is very unique. So to reinstall the barrel, of course, we just line up the spring with the hole in the slide, compress it, and drop it into place. Now you want to make sure that you don't, you don't leave the barrel like this. It needs to be locked in to the extractor properly in order to reinstall onto the frame. Now let's look at the frame real quick before we put the slide back on. This is the lever that you're pushing on right down here. And this portion right here is going to lock 
right there. And that's what keeps the gun together. So let's talk about cleaning real quick. Of course, this gun does not need cleaning. Uh, it looks like it does need to be lubricated since it's so dry, but uh, let's talk about cleaning real fast. When you want to clean a firearm like this, any firearm, um, you know, a lot of the carbon buildup is going to exist right here because your chamber is in this area right here. So when the slide comes to the rear, and smoke comes out the rear of the chamber, all that smoke is carbon buildup, and that carbon buildup is going to collect all over these parts, including inside the slide. So what I like to do, what most gun, and gun shooters do, is they use old toothbrushes. Save your toothbrushes. Hold the gun upside down and add a degreaser or solvent to the bristles of the brush. If you can insert the head of your brush into a bottle, that's great. And just literally scrub the parts like this, but keep the gun upside down so that anything that drips off and onto your cleaning mat, which should just be a rag or a paper towel, uh, will carry grime and carbon and old grease with it. And of course, while you're cleaning, you want to inspect all these parts and make sure that everything appears to be normal. And all these parts are look, look good. They look, actually this gun looks uh, like it's in really good shape. Now we do have a little bit of damage right here on the rail and that damage isn't going to affect the function of the gun at all. Uh, but the reason why that happened was the shock buffer deteriorated and the steel plate that holds the shock buff and plate in place fell into the recoil spring of the gun and got caught down here you know, where these rails exist and where they mar marry up with these rails. And of course, this is aluminum and this is steel. And this little, this little steel plate here, when it got caught, it easily tore that aluminum rail. So you have to be careful. Uh, guns that have shock buffers that need to be replaced need to be replaced before they deteriorate. So allowing this to go to that point, which I'm sure the shooter simply just did not know uh, the maintenance r regimen of this gun, but um, you know you got to you got to you got to do that. Guns aren't maintenance free. They need to be cleaned. They need to be maintained. You need to inspect them for broken and worn parts. Uh, you know, that's, that's what having and owning firearms is all about. Just like anything else. Alright, let's put it back together now. If you'll notice these steel tabs that are pressed into the sides of the slide, which, to be very honest, is a very cheap way of creating a rail for the slide but either way these front tabs and that rear tab they need to fit into this space and this space and then ride into this rail of the frame and to do that we simply line up those those spaces now what's going to happen when we do this is this area of the barrel is going to be pushing on that lever. So we're going to feel some resistance, but it's going to be easy resistance, and it should be easy. If it's hard, if it's very difficult, then something's wrong. See how easy that drops down? And when we get it down, we just pull it to the rear and lock it in. Now it's locked. Slide locks to the rear properly. Alright, 
So after doing a little bit of research on imfdb.org, we find that this model firearm was used in one video game. It's uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon from 2001, made by Red Storm. It was first released for PC and then PlayStation 2 and Xbox. But here in this steel shot, we clearly recognize the profile of the pistol. The, uh, the trigger guard, the shape of the trigger guard, and the, the shape of the sides of the slide. Thanks for watching, people. Make it a great day.